you like movies, comic books, science fiction, and more, then you've come to the right place. This is the Rebel Radio Podcast. You can find us at the Rebel Radio Podcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and join our Patreon for just $2 a month for you get exclusive episodes. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. podcast this is mark this is matt this is long the la detective <laughs> you know you i i made a joke in text that long could be a, a character in this movie and uh well, especially when he had the pony gel going and you know and the suit and everything he definitely could have been he could have fit well maybe i don't know maybe not the time frame because unfortunately this movie takes place at a certain time but things were a little racist in this movie <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit, you know. But, but, but the long oh, just a little bit, huh? Man? Long could have pulled yeah. off. Long could have pulled off the detective look. That's all I'm saying. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, but yeah. So how are you, fellas? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm being a little hopeful. I got a job interview earlier uh, nice. this week mm-hmm. for a different position in the company. So I'm crossing my fingers. Hopeful is good. That, That's awesome, yeah. man. You've, you've been a little little cranky today, I felt, too, in your text messages. That's I have I, that, been. That's why I called you grumpy. I, I was grumpy. <laughs> Are you anxious? You're anxiously waiting the decision? And I'm anxious. Edge. And I had, I, yeah, we'll, I'm on edge, and I got tired of listening about Dogecoin, and then I'm like, <laughs> you're just jealous. We'll move you on don't now. Have any. <laughs> uh, no, not jealous. Just like, whatever. <laughs> but uh yeah i've been uh, pretty anxious and my anxiety's been through the roof this week for reasons that i will oh, not talk about nothing compared to your anxiousness of course uh, i'm oh, just yeah. like and i've been my a little, usual dour self i've been a little cranky and stuff too you know but uh, it is what it is i will uh, solve my problems in the way i see fit you know and uh that's all good well if this if the te- if the state uh, if the state senate uh, passes the uh, open carry, no license handgun thing, uh, well, there you go, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the te- well, technically in Texas, you don't have to have a license as long as it's registered, have a gun on your property or in your vehicle. So, hmm. you know, so there you go. Yeah. So, bang, bang, pew, pew. Bang, <laughs> yeah. bang, pew, pew. And uh, but other than that, it was um, an okay week, I guess, for the most part. It was just your standard work, pick up kids, go to baseball practice kind of week. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah. And uh, got to brag on my little middle son who's playing baseball because he uh, got the game ball after the game last week, and he was extremely proud of himself, and I was proud of him, and it was a nice little moment <laughs> that's good he was, man. he was so happy so that's got to be a really good confidence booster he's only got just this week left we have three games this last week uh, assuming we play tomorrow as it's been a rainy evening here in houston so uh, hopefully the fields aren't too wet tomorrow to play so we'll see but, uh, yeah, we needed the rain i guess but not really because my yard's getting long I'm gonna yeah to call, i'm gonna have to call a mexican come cut it <laughs> oh shit i just made like a racist comment in a way on the podcast it was an inside joke with matt okay yeah, people so don't get matt. matt always knows i said investment uh, yeah damn i just sort of speed that out <laughs> you know, I I come on my yard. without <laughs> hesitation we don't we don't get offended we make we make those jokes at ourselves all the time we i had a friend that was a hispanic in high school and he'd be like hey man how how tall you want your yard so it's it's just you know it's how we joke. It's the dark sense of humor, you know. You just have to have that that dark sense of humor. So we don't make him to long very often because he threatens to kill us. That's right. Yeah. We know we will die a slow, yes. agonizing death. Yes, you know. Every now and then I slip an Asian joke in there, but I always feel like I'm going to die if I do it. You two are dead, but you don't even know <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> you know, that's some some uh, some monk type shit North going Star. on there. <laughs> You guys are dead. Just don't realize it. <laughs> Pulling the whole Sarah Connor thing again. On that note, um, no, Fist of the North Star. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I 
I guess that uh, puts it. So let's get into today's show then, shall we? Um, officially, uh, download this where we tell people what we watched, streamed, and checked out this week. Video games and uh, man, I slack bad on this. I don't really recall if I remembered watching anything. So while I think about that, whoever wants to go first can go. Because I know I didn't get Falcon watch yet today. I, I will watch over the weekend. I just didn't get a chance to watch the, the new episode today. Yeah, I, I watched uh, episode 5 mainly focuses on the whole consequences of uh, episode 4. It's mainly uh, you know, just uh, character resolutions and uh, motivations and stuff like that. So you didn't miss much yet. But they're, but they're uh, interesting pr- character progressions. Uh, for me, at least, that's my <laughs> download. This uh, I didn't do anything else. Uh, just watch random YouTube videos, and that's about it. <laughs> nice. YouTube uh, is for people who are bored, as one of my best friends has said. So I guess <laughs> my kids are bored all the time since they're always watching YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> If they're bored or trying to do a DIY, I would say. Yeah. One, one of those two. <laughs> no, I was bored. You're bored? Yeah. I was in I was in no uh motivation to watch any DIY stuff. <laughs> I got caught up on uh Captain America Winter Soldier or Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh Falcon Winter Soldier. And uh I I like where the series is going right now. Um, definitely some character progressions in the in the last episode, and uh, man, dude, I you know I think the the actor that plays uh, you know the new Captain America, John Walker, John Walker, I think he's a uh, he's he does a really good job of making you hate him. He just yeah, and that's the purpose. It's like. Yeah, at first I just didn't like him because I, of his face. I you know. Well, no, for me personally, uh, I reacted differently. I was kind of sympathetic towards him, so rather than hate him, you know. Yeah, I, I do feel like he can't handle the superhero uh, serum, superhero soldier serum, and that it's kind of affected him in a in a bad way. I mean, he's, you know, definitely a. You know, a good soldier that didn't translate into a, a good super soldier, uh, unlike Steve. You know, like you know, some someone that, like the doctor said, you know, someone who has power doesn't appreciate it, and someone who never had it knows the value of strength. And uh, I think that became evident when he got angry, and it, he just started turning. You know, and now what? I guess he's. Well, you'll see the last episode. I don't want to. I know Mark hadn't seen the last episode. Quit but, spoiling it, Matt. But yeah, man, it just the way it turns. I'm like, you know, where where is this going with him? Is he, you know? I said, stop spoiling about? it, Matt. I'm not. I'm not going to give any specifics. I'm just like, man, there's a lot of speculation. You just want to hear yourself talk, Matt. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I watched that, man. I, I I watched something else. I just can't exactly remember what I watched. Shin Godzilla? No, I did not. I didn't want to, but I was like, I wanted to get caught up. It was something that I started and didn't even get to get into that much, anyways. But yeah, uh, okay, we're done here. Yeah, that's all right, Mark. What's what's? <laughs> that's, joking, a, man. that's okay. Yeah, Mark. Damn. your turn. <laughs> Just kind of harsh. Like he's joking. harsh today, man. And yeah, I told you he's in a mood. I could tell Dang, by his text man. messages earlier. He's Long as like, uh, take no prisoners. Fuck everybody. Uh, I'm I'm just being on the edge today. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I got stuff that maybe can it's take a full moon. I got stuff that could take that edge off, but you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't. Full moon. I didn't watch much. Um, I um. I feel like there was something I put on the background the other day. Oh, I try. I was because you know Disney Plus put on those vin, the vintage Star Wars stuff, and I had the uh, the Ewok movie on the other day, kind of watching it. And uh, yeah, I'm sitting there watching it, and I'm like thinking to myself, you know, if you put yourself in 1984, you know, they asked for more Star Wars, and you had all these sets and costumes built already, and, uh, and you watch it, and it's really, it's not great. But if you put yourself in that mindset of that time frame, it's not terrible either. Because they were made for television in the U.S., released theatrically in Europe. Um, they're not great either, 
but you know, you just have to kind of put yourself in that mind frame of when they were made and, uh, you know, because the world was still hungry for more Star Wars at the time. And uh, so it's it's interesting to see what came out of those, I guess, in some ways and watch that old Star Wars stuff. Um, I tried watching an episode of the Ewoks cartoon and uh, now that <laughs> that's bad. That's <laughs> the droids cartoon is watchable because I have a DVD of that. It's you can watch it. But that Ewoks one. Good Lord. I don't know what they were thinking. Just the so- it's hard to make it through the intro song alone, let alone an episode. And uh it's really, really terrible. But, um, you know, that's about all I really remember checking out this week. Uh, I wanted to watch more of Invincible on Amazon Prime. I just had, I had a chance to after watching the first episode. And, uh, and Oh, I thought you were talking about the Mark Wahlberg movie. No, no, no. The cartoon that's based on the oh. Robert Kirkman comic. And uh, so I haven't gotten a chance to get back to watch any of that yet. Um, but I, I want to, though. Um, but only got a week left of baseball, so I should have hopefully have a little more time to watch some stuff. But I am ahead of the game. I've already started watching the movie we're doing next week, at least. I watched about the first 45 minutes of it last night. So, so you know, I'm on top of things. So, there we go. But, uh, well, let's get into today's featured film, then. A, um, a movie from 1997 um, with a all-star cast uh, directed by Curtis Hansen and uh, starring a... What pretty much Russell Crowe's first huge starring role. I mean, he had done virtuosity and a couple of things before this, but this was one of his first lead roles, along with uh, Kevin Spacey and Guy Pierce and James Cromwell and a uh, Kim Bassinger, who won Best Supporting Actress for this, I believe, right? And a bunch of other people in this movie, and that is L.A. Confidential. And uh, this was a first-time watch for the two of you, and um, which I'm not surprised Matt had to see. I was a little surprised Long had not seen this movie. Yeah. No, I haven't seen it. But uh, you know, uh, so I guess who want, do you might want to summarize? I'll do it. Um, basically, it's set in 1950s, right? I think it's like 53, 54. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 1950s. They mentioned the uh, year once, and I th- want to say 53, but yeah, 50s. Yeah, and uh, there's a crime wave going on in 1950s uh, uh, L.A. And you have like uh, three different detectives, or three different police officers in uh, the LAPD. Um, two of which are in the detective bureau. One of which is an up-and-coming uh, rookie cop, played by Guy Pierce. And then Kevin Spacey is your uh, Hollywood consultant detective, making pretty good money. And then um, you have Russell Crowe's character, who's kind of a kind of the bulldog character. Uh, very impulsive and uh, just solves crimes with his fists apparently. <laughs> his instincts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Muscling uh, people into their confessions. Um, but anyways. Uh, so yeah, three separate three separate stories going into the movie. Uh, and then gosh, man, this is hard to summarize because there's three different uh, plot threads going on. Uh, but it's done in a way where you can follow. And then it all comes down to the focal point of the uh, ca- the uh, Night Owl Cafe uh, Massacre uh, where one of the ex-LAPD detectives were killed. And uh, from, that, from that hit uh, comes another big mystery of who did it uh, at first, it was uh, three uh, suspects that were uh, accused of uh, the massacre, but uh, they were framed for it uh, because they they were uh, had criminal records and they were black, <laughs> so it was easy to pin on them, I guess. Well, very and corrupt. Then, oh, well, the department itself is very corrupt too. Yeah, extremely corrupt. Uh, but let's see. Um, but anyway, it's a big mystery surrounding the whole Night Owl shootings massacre. And uh, it all boils down to uh, Kevin Spacey, Guy Pierce, and Russell Crowe digging deep into uh, the corruption of the, the, the Bureau. And uh, eventually, uh, they find out that it was uh, uh, Jim, Jim Cromwell's uh, character all along, the captain of the Bureau who was uh, masterminding the whole uh, thing and the latest crime wave and all being, that good stuff. And it was all being financed through a uh, 
a porn yeah. maker, a porn maker, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a fancy porn maker, and uh, the porn maker gets offed, gets uh, taken out, and uh, anyway, said the eventual team up between Guy Pierce's detective and uh, Russell Crowe's detective, uh, and it comes down to a big shootout at the end uh, between them versus the bad corrupt cops and um yeah that's my summary that was a really bad summary <laughs> well, there's a lot going on there's three storylines and there's yeah. you know so i'm much just glad it, it coalesced into one storyline by the middle of the movie yeah. it's like so. looking at an onion about halfway through there's a lot of layers you've got the press that's kind of interlooped into the department and uh you've got you know the the porn p- people you got uh kim basinger's character you know who who's kind of in on it um a little bit and uh and plays her part well, well they make throughout the movie they make you think that her character lynn is is in on it but really she's not in on it as much as we think once we get to the end of the film yeah, she, she really is she really is it. just sort of stuck in the middle of it all yeah and she she likes uh she likes these people that are you know people her, you know, employers trying to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, intricate in this uh, whole ordeal. Um, but it's it's crazy how all the police work kind of comes together and it loops around because it does seem like a little bit of like how are they going to connect everything in the middle because uh, because of all the different storylines. But I feel like it's handled really well. Uh, Russell Crowe is great, you know, in his role. It's kind of like uh, that old school tough cop, you know, going to slam. Some people up against the wall get a confession out of them, like Long said, by you know holding them over you know a ledge to their death and say, "All well, right, I you think, don't talk, you're gone." I think the everyone's really good in this movie. You know, I think it's really well acted, um, yeah. and it, it's it's well shot and it's well edited too. And like you said, you have all these storylines coming together, but the direction of Curtis Hanson, the editors, do such a good job of bringing it all together. So you are able to follow it. And, and it's a really well paced movie too. It, it goes by briskly, even at two hours and 20 minutes. And uh, I'm curious y'all's initial thoughts being the first time I watched this. Cause I know I hyped this movie up a little bit. And I think this is a great, great crime cop crime thriller. And um, so I wonder what y'all think first time watching it. Matt, did you like it? I liked it. I, I thought it was great. Who was your favorite character in it? Ooh. I, th- I mean, it's gotta be, it's got to be Russell Crowe's character. I mean, it's no, no, don't yeah. lie. You like the captain more. The captain, you like the captain. That's, no, man, no. He, he's it's the blue uh, lives matter, Mark. I mean, Matt. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he's more layered. Russell Crowe's more layered than we give him credit for. This whole macho thing that he has going on is really to to guard himself. Right. He he himself is very fragile, but you know he's he he doesn't want to come off as that. Yet, you know, at and he also sticks to film. he sticks to his moral center too, despite all the corruption around him. Mm-hmm. Something happened to him, you know, that is re- revealed a little bit, you know, through the film. His hate of women beaters, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and women abusers, and, uh, and you you see that all the time throughout the film. He's got a a nice little arc there. Um, Exley, I didn't like him at first, but I grew to like him. Um, towards the end of the film, I thought he was, yeah, you know, sellout. You know, like maybe there are some things that he, you know, should have, you know, should have maybe backed his his uh, you know guys in blue on. But then it's like whenever things got really corrupt, and it's not just like a fight that you're trying to uh, to cover up. You're trying to cover up something much deeper and much more evil, and you know, then he he did the right thing. Um, and he even got the police chief, <laughs> the, the, uh, I guess, I guess that's the top police chief. Cause I don't know what, uh, called, uh, Cromwell's character is exactly. Um, he's the captain of the, uh, entire detective. That's right. He's Carol. the captain. The police chief was the one that he seems like he's trying to walk the straight and narrow, but he is you know, maybe a little corrupt. Yeah. Like he's aware of the corruption's going on, I think, but he kind of turns an eye a little bit and tries to stay the straight and narrow. Yeah, yeah. Or the, he's just powerless. Yeah, more powerless. Yeah. yeah, 
So it's like, uh, you know, it seems like he, you know, uh, Exley did a really good job of kind of twisting him into, you know, giving him the medal and, you know, yeah. putting him in, in a new position of power as the captain. In some ways, they're all despicable characters in a, in a way, but yet you find something you can relate to in some of them because some of them do have their moral centers and are trying to do the right thing, you know, but yet there's so, so much corruption going around them. It's as a viewer, you don't even know who to trust throughout the movie in some ways. Yeah. Um, but you lean towards Russell Crowe's character because he's just that edgy cop, but you're not sure about Exley till late in the film. You know, you're like, is he good or is yeah. he, you know? Um, yeah. With uh, Russell's character, he's more of a, what you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. And you have Jack, uh, right? Jack, uh, the uh, Kevin Spacey's character, his, it is Jack, right? Yeah. Yeah. The the Dean Martin-esque, uh, you know, performance that he puts on. Um, I think, you know, at first he's he's all in it for the fame, and then he finds... He realizes, you know, yeah. Something, you know, something's going on, and he needs, he wants to try and help Exley. And man, that scene with, with uh, uh, Cromwell, uh, you don't, you don't, there's no buildup. There's no notion no. or anything. He just gets shot and you're like, what the hell just happened? Yes. You know, I, I think it's, it, and, that scene was just crazy. You have to rewind it and be like, was there, you know, hint? you know, did he flinch or. And two, this is, you know, despite Spacey's public problems in the last few years, this is Spacey. This is Pete Kevin Spacey during this era. He's really good in this movie playing kind of a sleazy Hollywood cop, but yet also doing the right thing. And when he gets shot, like, it's shocking, and he and he. It's a really good death scene. He plays it very well, you know. Yeah, and very and very uh, very crucial scene too. Mm-hmm. Yes, because, it, uh, it changes yeah. the film entirely in that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gives the one little one little name off that that <laughs> you know puts Exley on the on the go. You know, puts him on the right path. You know, just from that incident. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you definitely Cromwell turned out to be one of the best villains in any movie, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So and yeah. he really thought he was going to walk away with it at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't worry. Stay confident the entire time. He's like, yeah, <laughs> show your badge so they know you're a cop. <laughs> yeah, I'll make you my chief of police. My so, lieutenant. anyways, uh, you liked it, huh? I liked it. Yeah. There's, okay. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I, I really like the movie. Uh, the movie uh, is very intense. I felt uh, it has it has a level of intensity right from the Night Owl uh, massacre, and from that point, it was just uh, go 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 for me at least. As far as uh, okay, why are these people killed and the chase is on to solve the crime and uh, and it just doesn't let up in a way for me personally. Uh, I was definitely immersed in what was going on. My brother, he was telling me that he watched Chinatown, and he said that both had very similar uh, plots, but the ending to Chinatown wasn't as good as the ending to L.A. Confidential. And he said I was, he was glad that I saw L.A. Confidential first before <laughs> watching Chinatown. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, starring Jack Nicholson. Right. But, uh... Yeah, it's uh, I really enjoyed the movie, uh, and yeah, Russell Crowe he kept up that, <laughs> he he was definitely pretty pretty intense throughout the whole movie. I mean, even through the quiet moments, the dude he just has that presence uh, on screen, you know, right? That quiet, but that charisma. Yeah, and then even at, at the end of the movie when it's revealed that he survives the shootout and. He doesn't say a word to Exley's character. They just shake hands and have this mutual respect for each other. And it's just like, um, even in that moment, it's still just kind of a powerful acting job by him. Um, yeah. You know, and, and then it's funny because like there's a scene where he's in a muscle shark. I'm like, damn, he's buff as hell in this movie. And now you see him in films and he's like older and gained weight. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's he so doesn't weird. care anymore. Yeah, it's so weird <laughs> seeing 23 years ago, seeing him in a movie compared to now. And, uh, <laughs> But, you know, yeah, but he, he is. He is really good in this film. Um, you know, like I said, I think this this feels to me like a really well acted film, kind of like a throwback in some ways to the old films of the 50s and 60s. Um, 
with the style and the way it's it's acted just everyone's delivering their lines uh, the way they should there's no one no one's overacting this movie no one's underacting it's all well done and um i i just uh it's a really great thriller a great uh who done it in a way um with a lot of surprise moments in it too from being dudley being the bad guy to um the shooting of jack <laughs> you know which like you said that's like wow that just kind of happened mm-hmm. and uh and then in the whole it's a good time mystery movie too the whole time you think lynn has something to do with it in the end she's just kind of a victim like the rest of them she's just kind of caught in the middle of them you know and then uh I did feel kind of bad though at the end of the movie though she doesn't go with Bud she goes with Exley and I'm like well that sucks you know <laughs> it's like Exley stole Bud's girl yeah that's true man I, I thought I thought she was gonna end up with uh, with Bud because she she wait alluded. a minute wait a minute didn't at the end of the movie she is going with Bud to Arizona is that what happens when she gets in the car I thought yeah. I thought they were all three in the car oh maybe so. Yeah. No, uh, I watched it last night. Uh, she went, in, Lynn went into the car to drive to go to uh, Bixby, Arizona oh. to visit her hometown. Oh. Uh, Ex- Exley shook uh, Bud's hand to see him off. Yeah, right. and, that's what that was. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, when yeah. did y'all watch this? Did y'all watch this movie? I watched no, it. <laughs> I watched it Saturday, Sunday. And, did you uh, fall asleep? No, I didn't fall asleep. I didn't. <laughs> I, I had a full night's rest on on that one. If you know, I was thinking the weekend, I'm good. I, I was thinking a weird thing when I watched this movie. Like, whenever Bud goes into the um, into the cellar and finds the body of Buzz, um, yeah, I was thinking like, you know, I wonder how often that happened in the 1950s. You know, there were a lot of missing cases back then. How many people hid bodies in cellars? You know? yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't help but like, think that. I think a rat got behind the wall. She's <laughs> like, was it a rat? Oh, yeah. A big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That poor old lady, man. I felt sorry for her. Yeah. yeah. Losing her daughter and all that. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't even recognize her own daughter in the uh, morgue. Yeah, because there was an odd, yeah, there was an odd kind of underlying um, subplot where the the uh, porn matri- matriarch or whatever you call him would do yeah. plastic surgery on his girls to make them look like movie stars, and and yeah. uh, so it was kind of a a strange. And then there's this whole lie where Kim Bassinger's lens, like, oh no, this is how I really looked. He didn't do anything to me, and it's just like I thought. I thought that's the only weird part of the film that was like it didn't seem to serve a lot of purpose other than her not being able to identify her daughter. It's like that was kind of an odd subplot yeah. going on there, and yeah. uh, and of course but it made sense as you watch it again, right? And um, what's his name plays uh, the porn star. Uh, he's always such a good actor when he's in stuff. Um, damn it, what's his name? Australian or something like that. Oh, uh, you talking about the the tycoon? Yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. That. David Strain, David Strain. Yeah, he's always yeah. very good in everything he's in. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a he's a good actor. I remember there was a movie he did with George Clooney, Good Night and Good Luck, that he's really good in. He was also good in Godzilla. He was in the first one, or first and second. Yeah, oh. he played the general. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but those aren't actor movies. Those are popcorn flicks. Still, yeah, Stram. Yep. Yeah, but he's always a good actor. Really but does uh, do. But I'm a. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the movie because I know I hyped it up a little bit, and I've always thought this was a very, very good cop thriller. Um, I was actually surprised. I think it was nominated for best picture. I don't know what it went up against in 1997 that wouldn't have won. Titanic. Oh, that's right. Titanic won that. Titanic. It, it was. It was nominated in nine categories in the Oscars, and all nine categories were were taken by Titanic. Well, <laughs> I thought this wow. one best. I thought Kim Bassinger won for best supporting actress for this. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up because now I have to. Know. But I know that uh, Titanic snatched all of the awards. Well, sure, it won all the This one, it won two Oscars: best actress supporting role for Kim Bassinger and best adapted screenplay because it's based on a novel. Okay. So it did okay. win two. It was nominated for best picture, best director, cinematography, art direction, a bunch of other, you know. I, you haven't heard much about from the director from that. You figured that'd be a good springboard. Yeah, um, yeah. Curtis Hanson. 
Well, he passed well away in 2016. Movie. Actually. Uh-huh. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, this is probably his biggest hit. But he only made 18 films. His last thing he made was called Chasing Mavericks in 2012. He did Eight Mile, the Eminem movie. I knew it. Yeah, that was a good film. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's The River Wild, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. But yeah, L.A. Confidential and Eight Mile are probably the two biggest things he's done then. So. Yeah, he. Uh, there was talk of a sequel, and it was going to set in the 70s. And yeah, because Chadwick- I think there's another book. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman was going to be in the lead role mm-hmm. with uh, Exley and White being in uh, senior roles. Yeah. I had re- I remember hearing about that, too, and it just never came to play. And, uh, yeah, because this is based on a, a, a book. I think there's two or three books in the series, if I remember right. And, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe one day it'll get made. You know, Russell Crowe could do it. I'm not sure Guy Pierce ain't done shit lately. Well, his last thing he was in Iron Man 3. Iron <laughs> Man 3, probably. <laughs> you know, it's like he just sort of just out there. You know. We'll see. But I'm he glad was you. Lockdown. Huh? Lockdown. He's in that space movie, Lockdown. Oh, yeah. 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 He, Guy Pierce, one of those actors, kind of will show up and stuff. And he was in uh, Alien uh, Prometheus, remember? He was oh, like the. Yeah. yeah. He was like the guy who was trying to get the alien technology or whatever, the company guy. So, yeah, he shows up and stuff now and then. But uh, cool. So what do you guys rank this movie since y'all watch it for the first time? i definitely give it an A+. Plus. Give it a solid A. Man, you got to be the oddball, Matt, because I give it an A+, plus too. <laughs> I think this is a just I think it's a great crime thriller. One of, one of the be- best ones out there in the genre. Matt has her own our perfect A plus score. God damn it, Matt! It's because it was challenging his perception on cops back then. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's your dog's barking at the Mexicans. <laughs> Could be. Hey, we're, I'm surrounded by. I'm surrounded by him. That got Matt. Matt just didn't like the scene where they beat the Mexicans up in the, in the jail cell. So that's why he gave it an A. They were all drunk. Oh, no, because they didn't beat them hard enough. That's why. No, I'm joking. <laughs> if you want to go yell at your dog, if you want to go yell at your dog for a minute, you can. Yeah, give me a second. All right. Well, um, I guess that brings us to today's top five. Then, as um, we uh, talking a crime nor thriller there, and uh, so we thought we would do top five dames or damsels, I guess, and not necessarily damsels in distress, but just dames and. Uh, I am um, a five uh, neo noir or noir I found this style list. women. Well, mine's definitely not neo noir because I got I got a sci fi chick in here. So I mean, this I don't know. I found this list kind of challenging. I I mean, I you know I don't know. I didn't really know what to do with it. But you know, Matt, you know, he always picks his top five. He gives an idea. Me along always shoot it out. Your idea sucks. <laughs> Matt, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna throw Matt a bone this week, and we'll use his top five idea. Yeah, and it was hard. Now, this might have been harder than the top five boats one that time. Boats? Yes, which is still lame. That was fun. That was fun, and you know it. So, Me and Matt had fun, at least. I had fun, definitely. As long as two out of three enjoyed it, it's all that matters. It was lame. Yeah. You know, this so, list, I actually uh, poo-pooed it a bit earlier, but I actually had fun making this list. So. <laughs> well, you Thank get you, to Matt. go first then, Long. You're number five. Okay. All right. You. Number five, I didn't catch her name, uh, but she's the blonde chick from Lethal Weapon Two. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say because you said the blonde chick. Okay, the blonde <laughs> yeah. chick from Lethal that, Weapon Two. Yeah, not oh. very much, but okay. <laughs> well, she's the uh, she's the Dutch. She's the one that's naked in the beach or the, or the, or the beach house or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I need. And then to she, know. she's still a crucial <laughs> plot. She's still a crucial plot point for Riggs. I mean, right? She, she died, uh, doing you know, just loving the guy, and then yeah, it, that sets him off. I just remember the nude scene, so that's yeah. all you had to tell me. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's that's my start off. The I'm uh, gonna, what's your name? I don't know. I've I've anyway. got Kim Basinger. And and the film we just covered on this one, I feel like she's got a cool story, you know. And and I think you you feel for her because she's being used, but she also has 
you know, emotions for Russell Crowe's character. And it all gets all messed up because of Guy Pierce and Danny DeVito. She was an eight mile, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she was. She plays, uh, she plays Rabbit's mom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, Boy, dude. Shit. I was um, hearing that one, too. Yeah. For different reasons. Hey. <laughs> eight, eight Mile is a good film, actually. Um, yeah, it is. Number five, I have um, I have Princess Leia at number five. One of the first dames I ever grew up watching, you know? And um, Dames. I mean, you know, Princess Leia is a top dame, man. I mean, you know, she keeps Han Solo under control and keeps the boys in line, and, and she's, uh, she's tough to boot. Uh, I kept all my women in the crime genre. Well, good for <laughs> oh, you. <my. laughs> hey, well, Job of the Hutt's a, gr- a gangster, okay? Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'll give you that one. <laughs> yeah, and there's international trade treaties that are that's being in, broken. That's, that's the prequels. Crime. That's yeah. the prequels. All, all right, right, Long, you're number four. My number four is Mia Wallace from Pulp Fiction. You know, she strings the guys along. Uh, she... <laughs> Nearly drives Vincent crazy with her antics mm-hmm. and uh, married to uh, uh, what's the Wallace from, you know, the crime boss. You know, so Mia Wallace, that's my number four. Number four for me. No, nice. I've got a uh, Madonna and Dick Tracy. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So I feel like she is like. You know, you want that sultry girl that's like messing with the cop's head, you know, and he's trying to do his job, but you've got this sexy woman right there, and he's just, damn, I'm trying to do my job, woman, you know? (laughs) (laughs) But she's also crucial to the plot, too. Yeah, she is. She really is. She was, uh, what was the, the, uh, the, uh, the faceless henchman? Oh yeah, the blank. I guess the blank. Yeah. Um, at number four, I have uh, the movie that LA Confidential lost to. I have Rose from Titanic. I mean, you know, steals the heart of Jack and uh, and a, a, a greatly told story. And uh, the world fell in love with Rose and Jack too in 1997. As the movie made a shit ton of money, and uh, it's a film that I think uh, people like to laugh make fun of a lot because it's but it's titanic's a great film regardless of what people say and uh, and rose is a classic dame in that movie and plus you know draw me like your girls jack <laughs> <laughs> uh number three uh nancy callahan from the first sin city movie nice. I mean, even the second one too i mean she had more of a character development and Part two, she was less of a victim and more of an avenging character. Um, but yeah, I'll go with Nancy Callahan and the Sin City movies. I did not movie. expect Jessica Alba to show up on this list, but I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She looked really good in those movies. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got one from a movie that's not so great, but it's the woman that we're focusing on, and that is Skojo. As silken floss in the spirit. But there's better roles for her you could have chose from. But she's Gojo? Who's Gojo? Scarjo. Oh, Scarjo. Oh, yeah. okay. Gojo. I was like, who's Gojo? It's funny because I really wanted to put Scar on this list because that's my major celebrity crush, but I just couldn't think of a movie that really she stood out for me as a true dame. Because she's either in action movies or. Or very small supporting roles like the Prestige, you know. Yeah. I just couldn't think. I couldn't think of one where she played a true day. You, you could have stressed the, it was a spirit. the Prestige, dude. Maybe. I, I'd rather wipe my ass and watch the Spirit ever again. That movie was so bad. Well, yeah, the movie was bad, but there was only two good parts of that movie. Uh, you stretched a little bit there, Matt, but I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> At number three, I have um, I I actually um, I I have Kim Basinger, but I tied her with her role in um this movie la confidential and as um vicky vale and batman you know i uh even though she's more of a damsel in distress in that movie she's still kind of a a dame so you know i i just felt like those were the those are always the two movies i remember her from or la confidential and uh well of course wayne's world but you know <laughs> yeah. so so i uh i went with kim basher number three as lynn and as a uh, vicky vale 
There we go. Uh, number two, Ava Green from Sin City 2. Man, that that is the epitome of femme fatale or uh, dame, I guess, uh, <laughs> or uh, crime noir. Could even and Ava. Even uh, as Ve- you could have even even use Ava Green even as Vespa, even in that yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Ava Green definitely the one of the main driving uh, points of Sin City Two. One of the main characters, and her her character is evil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's my number two. Yep. So I've got the other good part of the spirit, and that's Eva Mendez as Sam Serif. The movie sucks, but she's she's a true dame in that movie I mean those are the only two good parts in that movie and and maybe Sarah Paulson but yeah Samuel Jackson just out of his mind in that movie Man. Man. <laughs> at number two I have Marion Ravenwood from Rage of the Lost Ark I mean you know definitely a tough dame no doubt but she keeps the Indiana Jones in line and uh, you know she could be sexy if she needed to but she also kicks a lot of ass in that movie and, um, you know, one of the greatest action movies ever made. Rares of the Lost Ark, Marianne Ravenwood. Nice. Yeah. All right. Number one, starting <laughs> off, Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you. She's not even oh, real. The best, man. She's still a character. She's still yep. a noir dame. Man, I did not think about that long. You thank you, thank you. That's that's the best pick. <laughs> that's the best. Jessica Rabbit far. from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The, well, the focus might as well just pick Kim Bassinger played what, what's her name in Cool World, you know, yeah, animated you character. Go. So you know, yeah, yeah but she's not yeah. Jessica Rabbit. Women strive to look. Hey, like hey, Jessica there Rabbit. are people who love blondes. Too. <laughs> yeah, but Cool World's Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a good movie. Cool World's kind of eh. <laughs> you know, just not that great of a film. That had Brad Pitt in it. Yeah, Bra- very young Brad yeah, Pitt in it. Very young Brad Pitt. And, uh, Brad Pitt. Gabriel Byrne. Brad Pitt has talked about he had no idea what was going on when he filmed that movie. <laughs> <laughs> he, he even says, said it before. He goes, "I have no idea what we were doing." <laughs> You're yeah. sitting there trying to act with animated characters, and he was like, "What?" You know. <laughs> So I have your number. And Kim Basinger was the chick, wasn't she? Yes, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's right. Uh, sorry, I was yawning when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have your number four pick, a little higher long. I've got Jessica Alba from Sin City as number one. Well, Sin City one and, and two. Of, but, you know, she's just, you know, she's awesome. Yes. What can I say? It's kind of funny. I was reading an article about how people would say that Jessica Alba's a very bad actor. She's not terrible. Then, she's not terrible. No, no, she's she's okay. She she's a standard actor, but she really did her best in Sin City too. You know, yeah. She went yeah. to the whole method acting thing too. Well, there was so, a movie. You know, y'all say I don't like comedies, but there was a movie she did with um, it was like Good Luck Chuck or something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah she, she was a, that was actually a pretty funny movie. It was with what's his name? Yeah. She with was she was actually she was actually legitimately funny in that movie. She did a good job. I, I first saw her in Idle Hands. Mm. Yes, that, that, that was weird yes. horror movie. Yeah. Well, all right. Number, number one, my number one that I think Long will appreciate is the original Dame from the Golden Age of Hollywood is Andaro from King Kong. You know, I mean, yeah, Fay Ray playing her and uh, bringing her to life on the big screen, and uh, you know. She uh, create. She could be considered the creator of the dame damsel in distress or the dame. Oh, you know? okay. And uh, you know, I was going to really do a deep dive on the like golden era. I was going to go with either Lauren Bacall for Maltese Falcon. Oh yeah, or Catherine Hepper movies or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or or um, uh, what's that chick's name from uh, Casablanca? Oh yeah. Was- What's her name? I know you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. They're all those. Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't her. <laughs> oh, Ing- Ingrid Bergman. That's her name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would have been some anyway. deep dive in there. But, yeah. 
<laughs> or, or I was going to name nothing but Kim Basinger roles <laughs> for the top <laughs> five. I considered that. I was like, I'm just going to do five. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Kim, Kim Basinger always had that that classical Hollywood look to her, you know, with the big blonde hair and the lips. And she, she always fit that role very well. And, uh, yeah. you know, and she always did very good in everything she was in. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm talking to her like in the past tense. I know she still acts, <laughs> but it doesn't seem she's in as much as she used to be. Um, not since her divorce from my like Baldwin. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, let's do a little bit of news. Good top five guys. Um, there's not a whole lot to talk about, but a little bit, um, we just mentioned Marion Ravenwood. Well, Mads Mickelson has joined the cast of Indiana Jones five. Um, it's getting very interesting. I, I would think that he's got to be vi- he's got to be the villain, right, guys? I mean, I mean, Maybe. you're gonna, you're going to cast you. you're going to cast guy who played Hannibal and the bad guy in Casino Royale. I mean, it just feels like Mickelson going up against Harrison Ford just seems right. I, you know, and I'm hoping I think he might be playing a henchman to the uh, chick that they cast. Right? Yeah, they cast uh, the one girl from the uh, the one thing. I don't know her name. Lee Bag. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I trust in James Mangold. He's made enough good films that at first I thought, man, do we need the Indiana Jones 5? But, man, Mangold's really good. So, I, you know, I, I'm curious to see what he's going to do with this and and uh, give give us one more good Indiana Jones film before Harrison calls it quits. So, it should be fun. Um, did, y'all, did y'all watch the Army of the Dead trailer? Yeah. Man, that looks like yes. a lot of fun. Um, yeah. You know, Zack Snyder's coming off the success of the uh, Justice League cut. And uh, this is his follow-up to his Dawn of the Dead movie. It's uh, a somewhat a sequel, because from what I understand, it's in the same universe as Dawn of the Dead, but yet it's a different part of that world. Um, uh, Dave Bautista, I really like the Kenny Rogers song playing over the trailer. And, uh, of course, the big reveal at the end, I, I mean, the zombie tiger is badass. You know? and, and people have always talked about that. Like, you have these zombie shows, but what about the animals? And it's been approached in video games, but no one ever does it in films and television. So... It's, that looks really cool. Um, the movie just looks like a lot of fun. And uh, it's going to be on Netflix May 21st, uh, also limited in theaters. So if you want to want to go see on the big screen, you can, or you can watch it at home on Netflix. And uh, looking forward to that. And then I've last, never seen Dawn of the Dead. Never seen it. It might be on Netflix or Hulu or something. It, it's pretty fun. I actually like Dawn of the Dead. Um, the, the Lord of the Rings series is coming to Amazon Season one alone is going to cost four hundred and eighty-five million dollars. Wow! Wow! Um, as Amazon announced the budget today for the show, that's just for the first season. Um, incredible, wow. incredible for a television show to cost that much because you're thinking ten to twelve episodes probably for the first season. I mean, this is. I mean, you think about like Avengers Endgame had a budget of like two hundred and thirty million, and that's a movie. This is a television. Have show. they even filmed anything yet? They're in. I, I think it's been filming me for what I understand. Yeah. Cause I know it was, uh, it had been delayed because of COVID, but they're, they're using all the same sets and everything that were still up in New Zealand. But I, I do believe it has resumed filming. Cause, uh, I remember reading something. So yeah, I think they're working on things and uh, I guess this is a prequel to Lord of the Rings or something. So we'll see. And, uh, I guess, cause I remember reading. So yeah, I, I know they're filming. I remember something too long, too long ago. Vigo Mortensen actually went and visited the set and, you know, was kind of giving his blessing, saying it looks really amazing. So we'll see. And uh, so I, I think it's coming out early next year, or later this year. So pretty soon. So yeah, I think they start filming. So cool stuff. But uh, that's all the news I got. It wasn't a whole lot this week. Um, things, unless you guys have anything I missed. But I went down all the news sites and I didn't see anything kind of new. Um, so let's preview next week's film before we get out of here. Um, we're going to conclude Cops and Mobsters Month with a Best Picture winner. And um, maybe uh, one of Martin Scorsese's best films, but people could argue that because he's had a lot of good films. Some people prefer Goodfellas, some people prefer Casino, and some people prefer this film. It's just, uh, I guess, a matter of choice when it comes to Scorsese. You're not going to lose. But we're going to talk, um, two, we're going to go t- 2007, I think it was, The Departed on next week's show. When I was your age, they would say we could become cops or criminals. What I'm saying is this. When you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? This is not the regular police. This is the state police. We are an elite unit. This is who we're after. Frank Costello. You won't be paid as a regular cop, but there's a bonus involved. So what do I do? 
You will not ever know the identity of undercover people. You have anyone in with Costello presently? Maybe. Do you know who I am? Maybe not. I'm gonna have my associates search you. That was quick. Think he's dead already? Get your hands off me! I think we could work something out. We are all convinced that Costello has at least one mold inside the Special Investigations Unit. There are parts of my job I can't talk to you about. Man, you are trouble. You don't know the half of it. You better get organized, quick. Hey, last time I checked, I tipped you off and you're not in jail. Getting the feeling we got a cop in my crew. Soon a lady's gonna find out who I am and he's gonna kill me. I can get the rap. You just gotta let me do it my way. If you don't, it won't be me who pays for it. There's a leak from the inside. It's real, man. Smoke him out. You're lying to me. There are things you don't want to know about. What are you waiting for, honestly? I mean, do you want him to chop me up and feed me to the poor? Is that what you guys want? How's your mother? She's on her way out. You all are. Act accordingly. This is a good movie. Uh, I know, Long, you don't like the ending, and that's okay. You know, there's not a lot of movies. I We did 310 to Yuma a few weeks ago. I hate the ending of that movie. <laughs> you know, so sometimes <laughs> you just don't like the ending of movies. But overall, this yeah. is... A- Overall, this is a great, great film. I started rewatching it last night, and uh, I forgot how um, this kind of it's really extremely well paced. Like I was watching, I'm like, wow, forty five minutes went by quick, and I was like, I need to go to bed. <laughs> and, uh, so it's gonna be a fun one to talk about, and it's such, such good performances. Jack Nicholson's so good in this movie. Um, so uh, Ray Weinstone, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, a lot of good. Uh, Mark Wahlberg, who's excellent in the movie, so a lot to talk about next week. Uh, on the on the show we talked to the party and it is on netflix matt so you don't have to rent it there we go on, it's on netflix and hbo max so there's a couple of places you can watch it i actually have a copy of it on blu-ray but it is available to watch for free well not for free but on the services you pay for so yeah. so that should be next week's show and uh i actually well i can save that story for next week but i actually saw the departed with my mom <laughs> in theaters mm-hmm. and i was like Wow, my mom's yeah. really not gonna like all the language of this movie. But I remember walking out of the theater, my mom going, "That was really good. I really enjoyed it." I'm like, "Wow, she wasn't mad about the f bomb every five seconds." <laughs> well, I think if I remember right, I pre warned her, "But mommy, there's gonna be a lot of cussing in this movie." She's like, "It's okay, I can handle it." <laughs> so yeah, because they do drop a lot of f bombs in this movie. <laughs> but uh, that's next week's show as we talk to Departed. Um, but that's all we got. Thank you all for listening. Uh, the rubber radio podcast.com for all your needs and, uh, be safe out there and have a good week. And, um, until next week, this has been Mark. This has been Matt. This is long. The noir detective. <laughs> and, uh, as always, remember, just go there and go do there it. And do it. Do it.